Folks, it's too early to tell what the best TV show of 2023 is gonna be, but I think it's safe to say which one will end up the worst. Wanna take a guess? It's Velma. The show has barely gotten through half its first season, and it has already been ripped to shreds by critics and audiences. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't Velma that jinkies girl from Scooby-Doo? She sure is the nerdy girl who meddled in the crimes of ne'er do Wells, along with her friends in Mystery Inc., has her own TV show now. Giving Velma a show to call her own isn't necessarily a bad idea, but Velma is far from an alternative take on the Scooby-Doo formula. For one thing, this show doesn't even have Scooby in it. What this show is actually trying to do is present an origin story for the crime-solving gang. The show takes place while they're all in high school, and the story centers on Velma trying to solve the mystery of her mother's disappearance and the murders of local teenage girls. Meanwhile, the show will also feature a love quadrangle between the four human members of Mystery Inc. Scooby, like I said, hasn't been invited to the party. So far, so good, right? But we've only just scratched the surface, my friend. You'd expect a show like this to feature versions of the characters that are different, but true to the originals at the core. That's not what you get with Velma, though. Velma herself is a lot snarkier than usual. She's bi, and she's got a crush on Fred and inherited her love of mystery solving from her mom, except the disappearance of her mom has given her mystery-related PTSD. Also, she's South Asian American now, because Mindy Kaling voices her, and that's where she happens to be from. I'll be coming back to this later. Next, we have Fred. In the original cartoons, Fred was smarter than his pretty boy appearance would have you believe, but here, his IQ is pretty much as low as his looks are high. He's also heir to the family fashion business, which makes him a rich white boy. Again, there's more that we have to talk about with Fred, but that's later. As for Shaggy, he isn't even called Shaggy in this show. Norville is Velma's BFF and a news reporter, and he's really anti just like with Mindy, Norville is black because his voice actor is black. Finally, Daphne is Velma's former BFF and basically a mean girl. This version of Daphne is an East Asian American and she's selling to make money to hire detectives to find her biological parents. You've probably gotten a sense of why this show has rankled people by now, but if you haven't, it's because literally none of the characters are anything like they're supposed to be. Instead, Mindy and the writers have turned each character into some kind of a stereotype, except for Velma, who's basically Mindy's self-insert character. If you're someone who was excited for a new Scooby-Doo show, because of your nostalgia for these shows of the past, you'd be pretty confused about this take on the series. The pulpy and cheesy writing you associate with Scooby has been replaced with snarky and subversive humor. The mystery that's supposed to bring Mystery Inc. together is downplayed in favor of social commentary. Audiences have complained that Velma feels like Mindy Kaling needed a vehicle to point out and criticize all the things in the world that Mindy hates. Fred is a rich and pampered white boy. You must have seen the point in the series where Velma humiliates Fred by revealing that he doesn't know how to cut his own food, for example. Daphne is a minor celebrity, and she also sells She's the kind of person Mindy would hate, IRL, and so Velma has beef with her on the show. Speaking of Velma, she's super similar to Mindy Kaling, and that makes the show's agenda seem even more obvious. It's super convenient that Mindy has an on-screen avatar to dunk on the caricatures that Mindy has created herself. But this is all audience outrage? Maybe the fans don't get it. In that case, let's turn to the critics. As you can tell from the show's 52% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, critics aren't loving this show either. It does look like critics are more measured in their response to the show, though. That could be because, as their job, they have to set aside any biases that might stem from their history with the Scooby-Doo franchise. Even so, many reviews point out the droning self-awareness of the show and the way it hits you over the head 
with its commentary. The comedy also doesn't gel with the characters or the story, which causes it to stick out like a sore thumb. It does have bright spots, but those are exceptions that prove that the humor is terrible overall. At times, the show takes aim at tropes and cliches that are common in sitcoms, but critics found that the show's attacks on these tropes were pretty hollow. You can't criticize something without putting forward an idea of how it should be done instead. Now, as far as the critics are concerned, the one saving grace of the show might be the voice acting. The show's cast is pretty stacked, with Mindy leading Glenn Howerton, Sam Richardson, and Constance Wu. Even in the supporting case, you've got Russell Peters, Melissa Fumero, and Weird Al. It would be a real shocker if the performances weren't good. Speaking of the cast, some of them have actually spoken about the backlash. Two of the most controversial characters in the show, Fred and Norville, are voiced by Glenn Howerton and Sam Richardson, respectively. As fans continue to turn on the actors, they've given some mild responses. Talking with Tunado, Richardson explained that Norville isn't meant to be shaggy as we know him, and he should be seen as a separate character from classic Shaggy. He specifically mentioned some of the famous actors to portray Shaggy, Casey Kasem, Matthew Lillard, and Will Forte. Richardson stressed that he did not refer to their performances of the character, which you might have expected him to do. No, his performance as Norville is guided only by the description of the character and the scripts that were created for Velma. Meanwhile, Howerton had the same approach to Fred. In fact, he literally did exactly what Sam did. While Howerton has watched a lot of Scooby-Doo over the years, he went into Velma knowing that it's trying to do something completely different. He may have caused some trouble for himself, though, by bringing up the question of whether the show is meant to be canon or not. It's not, guys. Trust me. Diving into his perception of the character in another interview, Howerton said that the thing he latched onto was that Fred was a kind of unknowing bully. He bullies the others in the show without realizing what he's doing, which he thought was a pretty interesting dynamic. Most bullies you see on TV are just plain evil. Of course, that doesn't change the fact that it ain't Fred. And while the actors are doing their part by adhering to Mindy's vision of a Scooby show, that's nothing like Scooby, it doesn't seem to be landing with the fans. Since it's likely the show will get renewed for season two, maybe Mindy should consider making the show a little less of its own thing. And that's everything to know about the curious case of Velma. I can't say that I recommend watching it, but if you have, rant about it in the comments below.